Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Decoland. So, I have all eight of these mesh systems, the latest from TP-Link, all the way from the most budget-friendly X20 to the most expensive XE200. So these four are Wi-Fi 6 mesh systems and these four are Wi-Fi 6E mesh systems. All of them are backwards compatible. So, I'm going to compare their specs, speed tests and wired and wireless backhaul, range tests, I'm gonna talk about their app and all of these use the same Deco app. I'm gonna tell you guys at the end which one is worth getting and why. Cause right off the bat, all of these are very good but they're designed for different purposes so we're gonna try to break that down in this video. And if you guys haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year and I'd really appreciate all the support. It is free to subscribe, it's that shiny red button down below. You know you wanna click it, I'll give you guys a second. All right, let's get started. Now before we go into Chart Town where I show you guys all the results, I wanted to go over my testing environment so you guys know what I'm talking about when I say wired backhaul and wireless backhaul and internet speed test or local speed test. So for my testing devices, I used a combination of my Wi-Fi 6 devices like my iPhone 13 Pro Max and 14 Pro Max, both of which gave very similar numbers. And for my Wi-Fi 6E devices, I used a combination of my Pixel 6 Pro, Pixel 7 Pro, and Galaxy S22 Ultra, all three of which gave very similar numbers. So, I did a combination of internet speed test and local speed test and also did range tests as well. So let's talk about that real quick. And I also wanted to quickly explain what is wired backhaul and wireless backhaul so things make sense because you guys are going to see those numbers. And in fact, understanding those two things are very important to distinguishing which mesh system you want to get. And I'll also put all the product links if you guys are interested for that as well. So for a typical network is you have your modem, you have one of these two, pick any one you want. These are both technically routers. You connect it to your modem and the one that's connected to your modem via ethernet, that's the one that's now going to act as the router. The secondary one now becomes a node or satellite or an extender or an access point in the same network. So even though it's physically a router, it's no longer acting as a router. Now you have two ways of connecting these. You, you can do wired backhaul or wireless backhaul. Now wired backhaul, otherwise known as ethernet backhaul, is when you connect the secondary one via ethernet to the primary one and all of the decos actually are auto sensing ports so it doesn't actually matter which port you choose. So when you do that, there's an ethernet between these, you create a wired backhaul network and typically speaking, you get the best possible fastest and most stable network you can get. So this is what I use. If you can use this, this is definitely what I recommend, but it's not always possible to use this, you know, depending on if you don't want to run cables throughout your home or if you don't want to go through the attic to run the cables, completely understandable. In fact, mesh Wi-Fi's are very convenient because there's something called wireless backhaul. And what that does is you don't need an ethernet cable. All you need is an ethernet cable from the main one to your modem, and then when you plug in the second one, let's just say one or two rooms away, in my case it's around 35, 40 feet away, it wirelessly talks to the main one, expanding your Wi-Fi network. In fact, that's what a mesh Wi-Fi does. And yes, you can mix and match wired and wireless backhaul. Let's just say if you have three of these, you can have one wired and one wireless. Okay, so the issue with wireless backhaul is you know, it's obviously very convenient, but depending on the mesh system you pick, the speeds will probably suffer by quite a bit. So in the case of this X20, if this is a wireless backhaul connection, if I'm close to this one, I'm not going to get speeds anywhere near this one. And you guys will see that in the charts that I will show you. Now, for my internet speed test, I used the speed test app on all of the phones and I wrote down the numbers. So I did a few tests just to make sure it was consistent, the best possible I could get, the average of the three that I ran. I wrote down those numbers, good to go. Now, for my local speed test, this is, this is what I mostly concentrated on and my range tests are also using local speed test numbers, so just as a heads up. But this is what I concentrated on because no matter how fast the router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, that's 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So no matter how fast this can go, 
I'm limited by my internet speeds. Uh, assuming this can even go that fast, which all of these decos can, but assuming this can even go that fast. So the reason why I do local speed tests is because some of you guys have internet faster than that. So in order for me to find out the best possible speeds this can go, and not rely on the public speed test server, which can be busy at times, and not rely on my internet speeds, I make my computer into a local speed test server. So I pretty much get this modem out of the way, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, and this gives me the best possible speeds, and you guys will see a huge jump once we go from internet speed test to local speed test. Now, the results where I show the wired and wireless backhaul test, what I'm actually doing is, I'm going to the secondary one for wired backhaul. So Wi-Fi device is close to this, so it automatically switches to this guy. And then this one jumps to this guy via Ethernet. And then this guy goes to the server via Ethernet. And I write down those numbers. And for wireless backhaul, same thing. I get close to this one. So Wi-Fi device to this. And then this wirelessly talks to this. And then this goes via Ethernet to the server. And then I write down those numbers. I'll show you guys the specs of each deco in order to make the video a tad bit shorter. And just as a heads up, all the decos here have auto sensing ports, which means no matter which one you connect your modem to, it will automatically figure it out. So I won't say auto sensing for the other ones, but they do have auto sensing. And also all the packs are identical. So if you get a two pack X20, they're both identical to each other. So it's not like the Orbi where one's a router, the other one is a dedicated satellite, no. All the decos are technically all routers, however, not in the same network, but they're all identical with ports and everything. So I have the X20 here. We have two one gigabit ports. So I'm just gonna say gigabit just as a heads up. And now we have the X55, very similar, pretty much identical shape, except the top is a tad bit different. And we have three gigabit ports on this versus the X20. So you get an additional gigabit port on this. Then we have the X68, which is definitely taller. It has two gigabit ports. That's the shape of it. it says Deco on the front. There it is. And then we have the X4300 Pro, which is basically the same shape as the X20. And pretty much they both look identical, honestly, except we have three ports on this. So two of them are gigabit ports and one of them is actually a 2.5 gigabit port. So if you have internet speeds faster than gigabit, then you definitely want to look at this one or some of the other ones that have faster than gigabit ports. So we have the X4300 Pro there. Then we have the XE75. So this is starting with the Wi-Fi 6E system. So, so we have three gigabit ports. And if you guys are wondering, it's exactly the same shape as the X68, except it has three ports instead of two. Then we have the XE5300, which only the top is different. Everything else is identical for the XE5300. And it does say Deco 6E on the 6E systems. And then we have the Deco XE75 Pro. And if you guys are wondering, the only real difference between the XC75 and the XC75 Pro is that the 75 Pro has a 2.5 gigabit port in addition to the two gigabit ports here. So again, if you have internet speeds faster than gigabit, then don't get the XC75 because you would be limited to gigabit speed. So that's really the differences between the XC75 Pro and we have the fastest XE200, which has two one gigabit ports, and we have a monstrosity of a 10 gigabit port on this. So, and it's definitely bigger than the rest. So this actually looks very similar to the X90 that I tested a long time ago. It does say TP-Link and Deco 60 over here. So there we go. So this is the power supply for most of the decos. This is the plug, this is what it looks like. Now I had to actually put a sticker on this XC5300 because they're all, most of them are actually identical. However, the XC200, even though it looks the same, it's actually just a tad bit larger. So as you guys could see here, so this one for the XC200 is an output of 12 volts, 4.5 amps, whereas the standard one is an output of 12 volts, 2 amps. And again, both of them are 100 to 240 volts and the plugs look exactly the same. So it looks like it's the same size. It just, the XC200, because it's a more powerful unit, requires more powerful antennas, requires more power. So there we go. 
Getting into the numbers, starting with the internet speed test. Again, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And when I'm hooked up via ethernet from my computer to any one of these mesh systems, I do get those full speeds. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison from all of them, it looks like they all got fairly similar speeds with the X68 slightly taking a lead. But again, very similar, and this is a public speed test server. And the same is true for the uploads, but it looks like the X4300 Pro was probably the best overall. Now we get into the local speed test server to find out the true performance of these mesh systems. There's a huge difference in speed, both for download and upload, and the XE200 just took the cake. And that's thanks to its Wi-Fi 60 capability and its crazy fast port. Now, XC75 Pro wasn't too far behind, even though it costs a lot less. And the X4300 Pro, this is the interesting one because this is the other one that has the fast 2.5 gigabit port, but it doesn't support Wi-Fi 6C. My Wi-Fi 6C devices, however, on Wi-Fi 6 can still go crazy fast. So just as a heads up, so XC4300 Pro was also very good with the rest being very similar speeds to each other. Now. And the same is true for the upload speeds. And in fact, X4300 Pro was shining even more in the upload section with again, the XC200 taking the cake. Now looking at the wired backhaul results, you'll notice that there's much less of a difference between them. So the ones with the fast ports that were destroying them in the single router configuration are no longer destroying them in this one. And the reason for that is that they only have one fast port. So if they had two fast ports, they would get equivalent single router configuration speeds for the wired backhaul as well. But because they only have one fast port, as soon as you go out of the other port to get to the secondary one, now you're going outside of a gigabit port. So you're actually being capped to gigabit speeds. And this time around, the XC75 Pro was technically the best and the X20 was technically the worst. But again, very similar speeds to each other. And the same is true for the upload sections. Now we get to the fun part, wireless backhaul. And this is the biggest differences between the mesh system. So when you're picking something out and you're planning on using wireless backhaul, this graph should help you decide which one is best for you. Now you'll notice that the X20 did horrible compared to the XC200. And the reason for that is because the X20 is a dual band system. It has the slowest speed rating, whereas the XC200 is a tri-band system and it has the fastest speed rating. But you'll also notice that the XC75, the 75 Pro and the XC5300 also did very well. So not too much of a difference between the 75 Pro and the 200. So this is where you kind of want to find the sweet spot of, okay, is it really worth paying a lot more to get the best? Or am I really going to see that much of a difference? And the same is true for the upload speeds of wireless backhaul. So you can see that the XC200 is really kind of outshining the rest, but not that much more compared to the mid mid tier priced ones. Range test time. Now range will vary based on location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, a lot of other walls around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. Now I'm in more of an open area, not super open, but more of an open area. So I get fairly good range. Now at 20 feet away inside my place, the ones with the fast ports like the XC200, the XC75 Pro and the X4300 Pro are destroying the rest, especially in the Wi-Fi 6C category, both for download and upload speeds. However, the rest aren't doing too bad. At 50 feet away, I'm outside my place. There are a few walls and it looks like they're not doing too bad. However, you are starting to see a difference. So the XC75 Pro is doing the best in download, but the XC200 is really not that far behind. And it looks like the X20 is suffering compared to the top tier ones. And the farther and farther away you get, it looks like it's really a battle between the XC200 and the XC75 Pro. Now, both of them do well, but it looks like it looks like the XC200 is a little bit more consistent between the Wi-Fi 6C and Wi-Fi 6 devices, both getting pretty good signals. However, technically speaking, the XC75 Pro did go the furthest. 
For setup and configuration, you use the Deco app, and it's the same app for all of these. Now, some of these have additional options, like the Wi-Fi 6E systems have the option to use the six gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul. Now, that's what I had enabled when I was doing my wireless backhaul testing, which is why I was getting better speeds, typically speaking, in wireless backhaul for the Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, if you guys are wondering, when you dedicate the six gigahertz band as a dedicated backhaul, Wi-Fi 6E devices can no longer connect to the six gigahertz band. They can still connect to the mesh system on the five gigahertz band and still get amazing speeds like I showed you guys on my charts earlier. So just as a heads up. And something that I noticed with the XE200, this one actually, in addition to your main Wi-Fi, your guest Wi-Fi, you can also set up an Internet of Things Wi-Fi on the XE200. So again, some of these have additional options. Now, the Deco app was one of my favorite apps and they actually revamped it like a month ago. So it looks completely different. It, the user interface looks different. It looks a little more modern. Granted, I really like the old look as well, but everything's kind of in the same place. You have the different tabs, you have your basic parental controls, and yeah, it's just really nice. So you could set up the HCP, you could do static IPs. Now, if you're someone that loves to tinker and needs like a, an absurd amount of options, I recommend you go the ASUS route because they have a ton more options than any mesh system, period. However, the Deco has more than enough options for me, and it's it's very good. I, I just genuinely really like using it. So it's one of my favorite apps. It just works, no issues, no drops, everything's good. Now, which one is worth getting and why? Well, honestly, all of it depends on your situation. So I'm gonna say if you have internet speeds of gigabit or under, and you're planning on using wired backhaul, I personally would go the save money route and look at the X20 or the X55. Or if you wanna take advantage of the six gigahertz, so if you, let's just say if you have a few Wi-Fi 60 devices, I might look at the XC75, because honestly, this is a really good deal. So, and also I would check to see which one of these are on sale. So that might, you know, tip me from one to another, depending on, you know, if one of them is a really, really good sale. So just generally speaking. Now, if you're planning on using wireless backhaul under gigabit speeds, then I personally would kind of start looking towards the tri-band systems, especially the ones with Wi-Fi 6E, because you can use the 6 gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul. And obviously the XE200 is gonna be the best for that, but these aren't too far off from this and they cost a lot less. So this mid-tier honestly delivers like quite a lot of performance. I, I might be inclined to go with the XC75 in that case uh, for gigabit and under, and for gigabit and over, I probably would go with the XC75 Pro up to 2.5 gigabits. So beyond that, obviously the only one that can go beyond that is the XC200. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below, and as always, smash that subscribe button. Again, I really appreciate all the support. Thank you guys for subscribing. It is free to do, it's that shiny red button, you know you wanna click it, and I have a whole bunch more Mesh Wi-Fi videos coming up. If you guys have any you know, questions or comments, or if you guys are suggesting videos, I do try my best to you know, read the questions and answer them, or the comments I should say. So thank you guys for watching, have a fantastic day.